On drop rate is a series where I can only receive an item within its wiki stated rate, but with a twist. If I receive the item before or on its rate, I get to keep everything earned during the episode, including the desired item. However, if I do not end up getting it, I have to forfeit all the loot earned to you guys, the viewers. Let's introduce today's challenge. Meet the Moons of Peril, three bosses introduced with the Varlamor Continent. The Blood Moon, Eclipse Moon, and the Blue Moon. These bosses work very similar to the Barrows Brothers, hence a lot of people call them Barrows too. When you have defeated any of these bosses, but of course for best drop rates, all three of them, you may enter a treasure room, containing the Lunar Chest, which has the potential to drop the respective gear and set pieces corresponding to each Moon boss. The Blood Moon awarding the melee set, the Eclipse Moon the ranged set, and finally the Blue Moon awarding the magic set. To get any piece of equipment when all moons are defeated, you have roughly a 1 in 19 chance per chest to see an item. But as this is on drop rate, we need a specific item to hunt, which will be the dual Makwawiai melee weapons. And with that, we are looking at a drop rate of 1 in 224. All of the bosses are weak to melee, but they all have one style specifically of melee they're weak to individually. So this is the gear setup we're bringing. We're bringing three weapons with the Inquisitor Mace being Crush, Sailor's Blade for Slash, and Grassy Rapier for Stab. And when it comes to food and potions for this grind, they are all provided inside of the boss's dungeons. So kind of like Dungeoneering in RuneScape 3, you make all the food and potions inside of this area for free. Starting off with the Moonlight Potions being both prayer potions and super combats in one. And when it comes to food, you can go here and fish or you can catch some salamanders with hunter, but because it's based on like fishing or cooking levels, how much these heal, and my hunter level being lower than the fishing and cooking, I am going for the fish and I feel like it's also a lot faster to collect these. And they are cooked on the stove right here, which also you can right click on to get 100 run instantly as well. So basically all supplies are paid for in this area. For the entirety of the video, the rotation of bosses I will be doing is first the Eclipse Moon, then the Blue Moon, and lastly the Blood Moon. The Eclipse Moon is defeated with the Grassy Rapier, the Blue Moon with the Inquisitor's Mace, and the Blood Moon with the Seldor's Blade. And because I have maxed combat and very good gear, I should be able to actually defeat these bosses before they even perform all of their mechanics most of the time. Completely skipped one of the mechanics on the Eclipse Moon because my DPS being so good and we get a combat achievement as well and you can see on the bottom right now the Eclipse Moon is green checked. The Inquisitor's Mace making light work out of the Blue Moon that is now the second boss defeated for another combat achievement only the Blood Moon left to go. And that's it, that's the last one defeated, we also should get a combat achievement, yes we did, Moons of Peril speed trial list, that is killing them all under 8 minutes, so one run for me is like 5 minutes, so definitely takes a while. But it's time for the first loot of the entire video, we are at the Lunar Chest in the Treasure Room, and I've also added a loot tracker at the bottom of the screen. Also, on the release of these bosses, I did do some KC, 21 to be exact, and this is my collection log, but I never ended up getting any unique item. So maybe that can change right here? It does not. And that is 6.7k loot and also a combat achievement. There's definitely a bunch of combat achievements to go for here, most of them being fairly easy, but there's some that are a bit more complicated, but over the course of the video I do want to green log it. Already on the second chest we get some blessed bone shards and some sun-kissed bones, which are both new items. Both which are used for a new way of training prayer, which we'll go over at the end. Okay, we have the first item coming in, the blue moon chest piece, very early on. We now have one piece of the magic set, and the way that the loot works here is that if you do get, for example, a magic set piece, you can't get a duplicate of it until you've completed the entire set. I have not mentioned it yet, but the special attack weapon I'm using is the Crystal Halberd, and this is exactly why. Look at that, 5547, and that is not even a max hit. I think my max hit is well around 120. The question everyone has to ask after they got an item, can we get a back-to-back? -back? No! Uh, that's a terrible drop also. Oh my god, what? That was 121 damage and not even max hit. I was telling you guys, this weapon is crazy good here. You know, none of these bosses are really that difficult to kill, but this mechanic where you have to walk behind the moon shield on the Eclipse Moon is so annoying. For some reason, I feel like I'm always behind the shield and I still take some damage from time to time. And I know there is an achievement where you have to actually not take any damage from this at all, and I am dreading that. Moving into the double digits, I have a good feeling about this chest. 
I guess my feelings were wrong. Very, very wrong. I was actually thinking about maybe buying an Elder Maul for this phase of the Eclipse Moon because it doesn't really matter what attack speed your weapon has, they all become normalized. So just having a very hard hitting weapon is the best. And I was expecting it to be like 10 million, which is the price it's always been at, but now it's at 140 million GP. I know they buffed this weapon and did something to it, but oh my god. You know, I've actually realized I don't have to do this mechanic. The boss heals during this phase, and the healing is reduced if you do actually light the braziers, but uh, it is too much hassle to avoid all of these. And I can actually just AFK here until the phase is over. The boss heals like 100 HP, and I can hit that in two hits with this weapon. So honestly, I mean, look at that. It's already almost done. All right, we're hitting chest number 50, and we are on a bit of a dry streak right now. We got that item very early on, the chest piece, but since then, we haven't seen anything. So maybe chest number 50 is going to break that. Oh, it does! Elite. Oh, I was about to say elite, but it's called Eclipse Moon Chest Plate. Is this a more valuable one? I don't think so. 1.3 million. That is two, two chest pieces. Let's have a look at it. How does it look? Oh, that looks so good. Uh, I um, think this is the ranged one, but uh, of course that's going into the bank. I guess I should have banked it instead of putting it in my inventory. Now it's going to stay here for the remaining of the strip. Oh, no way. Of course, now we are catching up on the drop rates. We have another... Oh, this is 400k blue moon spear. I think this is the mage weaponry. Back to back. I mean, not bad, but not the most valuable item and not the item we're hunting. Now the real question is, can we get a back three back? Come on. Ah! No, we have a fallen brother. This boss is so dangerous. I see so many people dying on this, especially lower levels. The boss can hit like an absolute truck. But you know what? I'll take the free prayer experience. Chest number 68, and we have Eclipse Atlat, the ranged weapons of the Eclipse set. These are actually pretty good, I think, in PKing. I'm not super familiar with that, but I've seen some videos on it. And these are worth 1.8 million GP. I think it is time for a bit of a collection log update. We've got two Eclipse items, the range set, and we've got two Blue Moon pieces, the Mage set, but none of the Blood Moon pieces. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't get a duplicate of a set piece before you've completed the entire set. But as we've not seen any Blood Moon pieces yet, the chances of getting the weapon we're hunting has not increased at all yet. And here we are, standing before chest number 100 of the grind, and I have been getting roughly at high efficiency around 12 to 13 chests an hour. And this boss came out 40 days ago, roughly, as of recording this video. And if we have a look here at the high scores, Gary Moons has 5,002 KC. And that means he's been killing these bosses since its release around 10.4 hours per day. Also, if we up that all the way to 15 KC an hour, which is probably the highest you can get, that's still 8.5 hours every single day since its release. So there are some crazy people out there. But let's go ahead and claim chest number 100. Can we get something good for this one? And we cannot. Now that we're pretty much halfway through this grind, I think it's time for me to finish off the combat achievements of the Moons of Peril. We only have four more to go back to our roots, Perilous Dancer, Betrayal and the Clone Zone. The first one we're going to be doing is the Clone Zone, as it is pretty much the easiest one. You can only kill the Eclipse Moon by attacking its clones. Ah, uh, we were so close. 38 HP off the first one, but now I can basically just AFK here and wait for the next one. The boss over the course of the fight actually loses some HP over time, so now it's 1 HP. And the second clone phase, that should be it. So there we go, the Clone Zone completed. And we have another achievement done, killing all the bosses with only a Dragon Scimitar. That should be it, yes back to our roots we only have two more to go next up we're going to be killing one of the moons with a weapon they drop themselves so we're going to be using the blue moon spear which is a magic weapon but you have some decent melee stats for this one as well to kill the blue moon dude this weapon did way better than i thought and that is betrayal actually it wasn't that slow at all i only had to do one rotation of abilities we are now down to only one achievement left, and this one is actually very, very tricky. Defeat all the moons in one run while only taking damage from regular attacks. And I've actually kind of been trying to get it all these 112 KC, but so far I haven't succeeded. But I will keep trying and hopefully we can get that soon. 
On this orb phase is where basically all my runs end for this combat achievement. I always somehow take damage on this phase. Even though sometimes I feel like I'm behind it, I still get hit through it and I'm not really sure how to exactly do it. But when I can land a run where I take no damage on this one, it's probably going to be a successful achievement. No way. No way! We had a perfect run at the end of the final boss and a blood spawn exactly on the circle at the end, man. That's unreal. That sucks so bad. I was about to get the achievement right there. I actually think this is it. This took a bit longer than I thought and I've really, really focused in on getting this perfectly done. I think, please show me the achievement. Just be there, please! Yes! We got the Perilous Dancer! I'm not sure how long that actually took, but you could have seen on my kill counter when I started this challenge. I don't think it took too long when I actually started hard focusing on it, but it's more difficult than it sounds, honestly. That looks so good. Moons of Peril is now greened out 12 out of 12. And let's also see if we can get anything good for that run. Definitely not. Absolutely not. Another Eclipse item coming in, the Eclipse Moon Helmet, worth slightly below 1 million GP. And that's the third item of that set. We're only missing the legs now for that. And when we hit the legs, we can actually start getting duplicates for it. Oh, no way. No way. We got a double chest. I knew you could get this, but I know it's very rare to see. We get a Blue Moon Helmet and Eclipse Legs. That also finishes off the entire Eclipse set. And we are actually pretty close to finishing the Blue Moon set as well. We're only missing the Taz sets. But even if we're getting all of these items, I have still not seen a single Blood Moon piece at all, which are the items I really want to see to increase the chances of getting the weapons we're hunting. And we only have like 60 KC left to go, so it's starting to tense up, honestly. Okay, uh, we have the first Blood Moon item. 420,000 value though. That's probably the least valuable item out of all of them. And it looks kind of funny as well, but that's the first Blood Moon piece. That's it. That is the item on 188 KC. The dual Machuachua, I'm not going to pronounce that, I did pronounce it correctly in the intro, I did use Google Translate, but we're done! 188kc, we actually completed the challenge, let's go! And for the final time, this is my collection log, we ended on missing only the Blue Moon Tassets, the Blood Moon Tassets, the Blood Moon Tassets unfortunately being the most expensive item, and the chest piece, but there it is, the challenge is completed! Now, before we end this video, I do want to use all of the prayer experience we got during this grind because it is quite substantial. It's going to take a while though, and first off, you have to use a chisel on all these sun-kissed bones to turn them into blessed bone shards. Now, for the wormling bones, these are a bit different because initially you can't use the chisel on them, but if you pray here on this altar, you can actually make them all into blessed bones, which you can now use the chisel on to make them into the actual blessed shards. And why you bring them all noted is because you can actually unnote them at this guy for a very, very small price. All right, there we go. That is all the bones broken down of the wormling bones and the sun-kissed bones, and we ended on almost 96,000 blessed bone shards. I wasn't really sure how this method worked, so I did a bit of a test run, and one round of banked wine and the blessed bone shards got me 55,000 prayer experience, so it definitely is kind of wild. But the way you do this is if you want the best experience, you add a two of these sunfire splinters to a jug of wine, making it a jug of sunfire wine. After that, you head over to the exposed altar once again to bless all of the wine. And when they are all blessed, you actually can't bank them anymore. So now it's time to head over and use this for prayer experience. In this room, a bit north of the blessed altar, there is this liberation bowl. Simply click on it and then spam click and all the wines that you've collected in your inventory and blessed bone charge will be used up and the prayer experience that you get is incredibly insane. Also, for every single click that you do, you do lose two prayer points. You can see I'm almost out of prayer now, but luckily there is an altar you can pray on right up here, very close. Pray on that and we are good to go again. I do believe the only level we're going to be getting on this grind coming in, 92 prayer. I don't think that actually unlocks anything, but more prayer points is never a bad thing. 
And we're down to the last few shards, and it's kind of crazy how much prayer experience that was. We did 188 Lunar Chests, and we ended on 574 almost thousand prayer experience. That means every single Lunar Chest that I looted was roughly worth 3,000 prayer experience, meaning each moon defeated is like a thousand. So for Iron Man especially, this is actually really good prayer experience. Before we head over to the GE to sell everything, I do want to mention that if you do want to max out the money from the Atlas darts, you can sell them to the West Ardoin General Store for 269 GP each instead of like 60 to the GE. But the problem is after you sell 50, they are down to below GE value. So the problem is that you will have to world hop a ton if you want to sell them all for the max value and for me that's not really worth it. All of the big items have been sold, and some of them sold for quite a lot actually above GE value, especially the Blue Moon pieces, but let's go ahead and collect everything and see what the cash tag is like. 17 million, and let's see exactly, 17.5 million, and pretty much all of that is pure profit, as the supplies were offered to us in the caves. But that is it for this video, I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, please leave a like or subscribe to make sure you're up to date on all the on-drop rate episodes, and until next time guys... Take care.